Local boxer Gerald Schifoni trains right here in Stoughton at the Big East Boxing Club. After a decorated amateur career, which included four New England Golden Glove Championships, the 26-year-old junior middleweight turned pro and won his first professional fight this July and is looking to improve to 2-0 when he takes on Somerville boxer Lucas Cruz Saturday, October 26th at the Irish Cultural Center in Canton. After a sparring match in Rhode Island, Gerald stopped by the Stoughton Media Access Studios to talk about his boxing career and his upcoming fight. Uh, just to start, take us a little bit through your uh, boxing, you know, career. How did you get started in the sport, and you know, take us to now. Um, just uh, growing up, I mean, I was kind of always a, a little bit rough in the streets um, in Brockton. When I was, you know, going to Brockton High School, I kind of had to. Uh, street fight a little bit, kind of protect myself. Um, you know, like most young kids, um, I got bullied a little bit, got pushed around, and uh, it made me want to fight. And, um, you know, I had a good friend who was boxing at the time, and he kind of just uh, started bringing me around the boxing gyms. And luckily, my uh, my father knew Joe, so we ran into him one day while I was working with my dad, and uh, he asked Joe to train me, and it was kind of history since then. And your father, of course, Mike, is a Stoughton firefighter. Yep, my father, uh, he's a Stoughton firefighter. Um, he's been on the fire department, I think, for over 20 years now. Um, he's pretty much the mayor of Stoughton. Everyone knows the guy. Um, he's, you know, he's a pretty uh, likable guy. And I think everyone, everyone that knows him pretty much says the same thing about him, that he was a fighter when he was a kid. And, um, you know, I... I I get it from him, but I also get it from my mother too. My mother's a pretty tough woman. And you have quite an accomplished uh, resume in your amateur career. Uh, you're a four-time Golden Gloves champion in New England, mm -hmm. and you've partaken in over 50 fights in your amateur career, and you've won 80, about 80 percent of them. So, yeah. you know, what was the decision? Where when did you feel it was the right time to go pro? Um, you know, I, I got my shot at the national level a few times. Um, you know, I, I was right there. I almost won a na national title a couple times. I mean, I've placed third. Uh, I've got br brought home bronze medals. I've placed second in national tournaments. And uh, even those tournaments, I felt like I, you know, the fights were so close that I probably may have won. Um, just decisions don't always go your way. Um, so, you know, after a couple times of going to the Nationals and, you know, seeing how I ranked um, at a national or international level, um, I felt, you know, it was time. Um, I'm, you know, I'm in my, my mid-20s now. Uh, I, if I wait any longer, I, you know, I might miss my shot. So you turn pro, you make your pro debut in July up in New Hampshire in an ESPN2 sponsored fight uh, and you win in four rounds which is the maximum number of rounds yep. in these fights so take us through that first fight and you know what that experience was like how did it differ from what you saw at the amateur level um, you know my first pro fight I think I, I was nervous as probably a lot of people are on that first pro fight um, you know there's no headgear there's smaller gloves um, it's just a whole different ball game. Uh, it's you know it's four rounds rather than three, and uh, but you know when I got in there I got comfortable and um, you know I threw down like like I've always been known to do. And from press clippings, you picked it up in those third and fourth rounds after kind of splitting those first two. So yep. nice to see you picking up steam as the match went into its later rounds. Yeah, I mean, my, my whole career has kind of gone like that. Um, I, you know, I always pick it up as the, the fight goes on. I, I gain momentum and, uh, you know, I, I was going in there for the knockout. Uh, I, unfortunately, I didn't get it, but... Um, you know, hopefully I'll get at this fight. And this fight, of course, coming up October 26th at the Irish Cultural Center. Uh, you're facing somebody, you know, a little bit of an unknown. Um, you don't, you haven't faced him before, obviously. And so what, what's that like going into a fight? You know, are you scouting? Do you have tapes? Like, how, how do you prepare for somebody that you haven't faced before? I mean, you can look people up online. Um, sometimes you can find footage. But, I mean, other than that, um, if at this level of the pro game, I mean, you kind of just have to, you can't really pick and, I mean, you can pick and choose who you're fighting, but I mean, 
you can't, uh, you know, I'm not going to not take the fight just because I don't sure. know who it is, you know, I mean, I, you know, I, I trust, obviously, my trainer, my manager, and you know, all that's decision, and, you know, at the time, my man, at, right now, my manager is pretty much my dad, so. And no offense to Mike there, but actually perfect, uh, perfect cue right there. We have uh, Joe Ennis, who is your trainer, and, you know, he's based out of Big East Boxing, again, down right here in Stoughton. So, you know, Joe, um, kind of talk about how your relationship started with Gerald and, you know, where it's gone over these last number of years. Well, like he said, he, they called, I met his father up at the gas station, and when I met him, he was 0-2. And uh, he, he wanted someone to take over the training, and I took it over. And it's pretty much been pretty successful. We've been, we've been uh, like you said, 80%. It's probably more 90% with the wins at, in the amateurs. And, uh, you know, like you said, he's in his mid-20s. He trains hard. He brings his lunchbox. The kids, you know, he's an animal. Uh, he never complains. Even, you know, he fought with a broken nose, he fought sick, and he, fights, he fought the best kids in New England. Then he went to the Nationals, and he did well out there. And like you said, he's in his mid-20s, and it was, it was time. Well, you know, kind of give a, a, a scouting report of Gerald. You know, what's he like as a boxer? Well, he's, he's, he's a thinker. He's a slow starter. But once the fight gets going, it's on. He lets his hands go, and he's, he's a rough, tough kid. You know, he's got a nice jab, nice right hand, nice left hook. He thinks, and uh, he's got a good defense. I mean, he's, got, he's, he's pretty much got it all. You know, and, and you're a junior middleweight, so you kind of have to be a little quick on your feet, too, yep. with, um, I'm sure, speed's a factor yep. in these matches. Absolutely, yeah. Speed. He's a, yeah, he's a big junior middleweight, though, mm. at 54. 150. 154. Now, he weighs in the day before yep. at 54. And he gets a night to recover, so then he's walking around almost 160, 164. So he's a, he's a big junior middleweight. Uh, how tough is it? I mean, wrestlers go through this all the time, you know, boxers, any sport where you're weighed in before you compete. How tough is it to get down to weight? And, you know, what, what weight would you be on a, just an you know, average day where you're not training for a fight? Uh, I mean, <laughs> there's times when I can get up to, like, you know, 170. I, I mean, I'm up in that, over, up in those weights, and um, you know, when I'm training hard, and uh, and, I'm, and I'm eating well, um, usually I can walk around around like 160, 165, and then, you know, the last few pounds are always a struggle to get to, but, um, you know, I, I I know what the day before weigh, and I have a whole day to recover, and, um, you know, I can do it. What's your diet like in getting down to fighting weight? Oh, very very strict. No. Pretty much no carbs, um, lots of chicken, fish, vegetables, just, just all really good stuff for you. I mean, it's pretty much consists of all that stuff. So on the day of a fight or the night of a fight, depending on the time, what's going through your mind? What, what do you do to mentally prepare yourself to step in that ring? I, uh, I don't know. I just kind of just know in my head that I got that the win before I even have it. And... Um, you know, I just know what I'm capable of, and I just kind of tell myself that. And, uh, you know, when I get in there, I, you know, I just like to throw down. And, Joe, what's your role on the, during the match itself? What, what are you helping, you know, how are you helping Gerald? You know, what's your, what's your role? My role is to figure out the other guy mm -hmm. right away. You know, he's got a lazy jab, he's dropping his right hand. How's his footwork? I'll figure him out. 15, 20 seconds, I'll figure him out. And then it's my job to relay it to him. He'll hear my voice, uh, we'll talk about it after the first round, and then he'll do it. And, you know, it's, it's done, we've done well. Uh, you, have you been knocked down before? Uh, no, I've, I mean, I've tripped and stuff. Right. I mean, I've been down just right. like from trips and stuff like that. But... How hard is it to get up? Uh, You've never been down. No, I've, just, I've, just never, I've never been hurt. Though. You, but just to, is, it, is there a psychological, just to, you know, how quick you have to get back, even tripping, just to quickly get back up? Um, I mean, even that would probably be part of the game. If you really get stung, um, I would probably, if I really was to ever get stung and be, and be put down, um, I'll give you I, a I, I, yeah, they count no matter what. Um, 
so I mean, if that was the case, I'd probably take a few seconds mm -hmm. and then, you know, get get my composure back and then get up. Right. Don't just, sometimes when you try to rush back up too quick, that's when you look all, you know, wobbly and <laughs> that, ain't happening. That, that can make you look worse, you know? <laughs> yeah. well, well, how much of boxing, of course it's a physical sport, yeah. but how much of it is a mental sport? <sighs> probably at least 75%, I'd say. And, you know, 25% physical, something like that. It's like, it's gotta be at least that. I mean, if you if you don't think in your head that you're capable of winning a fight, then um, why even bother? Now, how many hours are you putting into this going up? Like, uh, your last fight pr was in July. Mm -hmm. So from July to, you know, late October, what have you been doing to prepare for the for this match you know when did you decide to take part in this match first of all um i was gonna take a fight in september i don't know what happened with that i think it fell through or something mm -hmm. and then um you know i fought like it was like the last weekend in july so it was the end of july um so i mean what's it like a couple months went by I, but i've been up at the gym training hard um working on my game trying to improve and uh i've definitely seen improvement in myself even in the last couple months it's cr it's crazy how much you can learn even when you've been doing it for so long. And this isn't the only thing that you're doing. You're also uh, you're a tattoo artist in East Bridgewater, and that's at the Sacred Edition Tattoo Parlor in East Bridgewater. Mm -hmm. And you also, starting this school year, you're teaching art down in Dighton Rehoboth at their high school. So how do you find time for it all? <laughs> um, I just I dedicate my life to... Um, what I want to do and that's you know and as of right now those those are my main money makers um, I need to live I need to pay the bills mm -hmm. and uh, you know I can't I'm not one of the one of those people that rely on their parents or you know I came from a rich background so I need to support myself but um, at the same time you know I, I don't want to give boxing up either so on all the spare time that I have I put it into boxing and uh, you know most people on their free time or on the weekends will go out have drinks or something with their friends, hang out with their friends, but I don't have time for that. I, I pretty much just train and that's it. Um, so I don't, so I, I kind of, my life lacks fun, I guess, besides fighting, you know. Well, how'd you get into the uh, the tattoo industry? How'd you, um, you went to Bridgewater State and you majored in art education there. So, yeah. you know, how did you get into working in East Bridgewater with the tattoo parlor? Um, I was in school and uh, you know I would drive by the tattoo shop every day and I was looking for a for so, uh, something for money while I was in school uh, a job anyway like that would make good money and I was always interested so I just kind of stopped in there one day talked to the owner um, I got an apprenticeship and then uh, you know what once the apprenticeship was done then I started you know really tattooing and making money and I put my work in now who does uh, who does the work on your arms? A um, couple people. This guy is a guy named Freddie Cugno. He works at the shop with me, <laughs> um, and this guy's out in Cambridge. So I, I mean, I've gotten I've gotten tattooed by multiple people mm -hmm. um, all over the place. But um, yeah, I mean. Uh, now, as an art teacher, uh, first teaching experience this year. Yep. Um, what what's that been like? Um, it's not so bad. I mean, I I feel like. For a first-time teacher, I'm I'm pretty comfortable in, in the classroom. Um, although I mean I'm not. People that know me are like you're so you know you're a pretty quiet like pretty quiet guy. Like how do you you know how do you manage a classroom? But same thing with fighting. I mean I guess like when you when you get over that like stage fright and you know that fright of being in front of people and teaching or fighting or anything like that. And I've had a lot of you know I feel like fighting. I always reference f to fighting because mm -hmm. it, it helps me in so much of my life, like just getting over so many fears and, you know, getting through what I need to get through. Well, what's it like, you know, you're not too far removed <clears throat> from high school yourself. What's it like to be back in that setting? Oh, I mean, it's great. Um, you know, my students all like me and they respect me because they know I'm a fighter and they, they know that I'm, you know, that I'm young still and, you know, they see, they see that I'm like somewhat you know, close to age, not too much, but, you know, close enough. I'm still a young guy, and uh, so I, I get a lot of respect, and, um, you know, my students really learn a lot, and, you know, they, they like me as a teacher. 
So you, you go from you know teaching school probably somewhere between you know seven and two every day, yep. right to the ring right now after that. Pretty much, yeah. Today I went right from school. I drove down to Pawtucket, um, got you know five hard rounds of sparring in, and here I am. Now, Joe, do you accompany Gerald on these sparring matches? Mm -hmm. Yep. And how important are these building up to a, a match important. like this? It's important for him to get sharp, be in shape. You know, and be sharp, and the more he gets in there, the better he gets, the more comfortable he'll be. Like he said, 75% of it's mental. So the more he gets in, the more he gets used to getting in there, the easier it's going to be. Now, going back to the gym that you own in Stoughton on Lindelof Ave, the Big East Boxing Club, um, tell us a little bit about how that started and, you know, how, um, why you brought your club to Stoughton. I had a club in Stoughton across from Shimong Hill. Yep. Shimong Hill School for probably 15 years with Tony Petronelli. And uh, the guy downstairs died, so I left. I went to my house, put the ring in my garage for probably three years, and Gerald trained there for. And, and this is in? At my house. Yep. In the garage. And then we looked for a spot. I looked for a spot with Billy Moffat. He's out of Randolph. He fought for me. And now uh, we found a spot on the Stoughton Randolph line. We liked it, and now uh, we've been there three years, and it's going good. What's it like training there? Oh, I love it. I mean, I I don't care where I train as long as I have Joe. Obviously, I fa I'll follow him wherever he goes. Um, like I, I won my first Golden Gloves right out of his garage, <laughs> and people used to laugh about that. You know, like you win your Golden Glo you won your Golden Gloves out of a guy's garage. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, pretty much, yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, then, you know, after after that, that's when the gym opened and uh, I've won three cents. And um, I, I, like I said, I don't mind. I, li I like the gym. I like the environment. Um, you know, every almost every night they have uh, classes that a um, couple peop different people run. And they're great. They're, they're usually packed. Um, people love taking them. They learn a lot. They get in shape. Um, so, I mean... I just like the environment. I go up there and I see all these people, and you know, I'll get in the ring and shadow box or hit the mitts with Joe. And you're close with another Stoughton based boxer, um, uh, and so you know, what what's it like? What did the boxing community is it a close knit, you know, community? Um, do you do you guys, uh, you know, how close are you with some of the other fighters at the club or at other clubs? <sighs> that you train oh, with? Oh, I mean, fighters that you train with, you, they're pretty much like family, you know? You see the guys every day, you, you get in there, you, you fight with them like they're your enemy. You get in the ring, you know, you can be best friends one minute, you get in the ring, you're slugging it out, you know, you try still trying to take their head off and then the bell rings and it's all hugs and, you know, back to, back to the way it is. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's just how the game is. Now, how long have you known Sean Betancourt and, you know, either trained with him, sparred with him? Um, Sean started coming to the garage right before the gym opened. Um, you know, I was training up there with Joe and, you know, this new guy started coming around and uh, that's when I met Sean and uh, he had known my family from Stoughton. My family's a pretty big name in Stoughton and uh, it's kind of been history since. Me and him, like, we traveled a lot for nationals. We were roommates. Um, pretty much every time we went out uh, and fought in nationals, I mean, we both went out to the ringside tournament last year, and we we both um, came in second, and and that's an international tournament, so we fought guys from all over the world. Um, so for both of us to go out there and take home second place, that was a big, that was a pretty big deal. Uh, so yeah, we have a lot of history together, and um, you know, obviously the last whatever six months or whatever it is he hasn't really been around and I you know I, I still talk to him I, I actually tattoo him I tattooed mm -hmm. him a couple of weeks ago um, so he's a you know he's a great kid and I just you know hope the best for him. Now, what are, who are some of your influences boxing whether you know past boxers current boxers anybody that you look to and try to uh, mirror your style or or you like a particular way that they might move in the ring you know anybody that you that you study? Um, I've pretty much grown up watching a lot of different fighters. Um, you know, when I was a kid, we used to um, watch every single Tyson fight that was on pay-per-view, and I think that was that was my generation, you know, the Tyson generation, and uh, 
that that's when I fell in love with blocks and I was a little kid, you know, my, my uncle would come to my house and we'd get it on pay-per-view and half the time I was so young, I'd fall asleep before the fight even came on. He'd wake me up, hey, hey, you know, Tyson's going in and, you know, I'd get up, watch the fight and, you know, I used to love the, used to love it. And, uh, you know, obviously coming from a, a boxing city like Brockton, um, I, you know, watching all the Marciano and Marvin Hagel fights and I just kind of, it just, fell right on my lap I mean boxing was just you know it was meant to be and uh like I said I try to I've tried to watch a little bit of everybody and take something for everybody all right take me to Saturday the 26th on you know the day of your fight obviously you're going to be looking for a win yep. but what are you looking to get out of it in your second pro match what are you looking to get out of this experience I believe it's the first time that the Irish Cultural Center has hosted a boxing tournament so um just like every other fighter is looking to do I'm, I mean I'm looking to go in there and prove myself and uh you know I, I'm a, I should have a pretty pretty big following that night it's it's close to home I feel like there's going to be a lot of people there uh backing me and I want to put on a good show and I want to obviously get the win and uh that's pretty much all I'm looking for at this point does it help being so close to home for this fight, or is it, it, you know, your last one was New Hampshire, so again, that's not impossible for anybody to get yeah. to, but do you do you like fighting close to home? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, I, I consider myself a, a crowd pleaser. I, I The more people that come and support me, uh, you know, the harder I'll fight, you know. I just, I love to, to just make it pleasing for everybody, and, you know, I, I just, if somebody's willing to stand there and make it a fight with me, then, as Joe says, throw down and make it a fight. You know. And yeah. how long? How much longer do you, uh, you know, do you envision yourself uh, staying in the ring? Eh, I don't know. I mean, this box is out there now, like Sergio Martinez and Bernard Hopkins that are fighting still world champions, and they're, you know, pushing Even forty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sergio Martinez is like what 38, 39 yeah. now, and Bernard Hopkins is mid forties. So basically, till the passion. I mean, yeah. Whenever it, you know, whenever it happens, it happens. You know, I'll just keep going. But it's just a, it's a disease, and I, you know, whether I'm in the ring, I'll just. You no, know, you want to get him. You know, get him four or five fights a year. Mm. And try to get his record up there, and then maybe, who knows, get a big fight. Just keep it going. Well, again, thank, thank you both for joining us again the fight. It's October 26th at the Irish Cultural Center, uh, right in neighboring Canton. That's located off of 138. And uh, thank you. Thanks, man. Thanks. All right. Appreciate you guys talking by. Thank you. Mm-hmm.